Hello everyone! I hope you're doing well today. As you can probably tell, this video is another Lila Talks dub video. <laughs> um, because of the amount of views that my free eternal summer video got uh, when I talked about the dub announcement for that, and because there was some decent amount of uh, interest in continuing this series and making it more of a regular one, uh, here we are, <laughs> making this into a full-time regular series, and this one's kind of going to be a bit more unscripted compared to most of my other videos. I just have a general outline and going through all of that, so you may be seeing me rambling and stumbling a little bit here and there, so bear with me. Um, how this show is going to work, it's e each episode is going to be in one of either two formats. Um, the first is I either talk about my opinions on a recent dub announcement, like I did with Free Eternal Summer, uh, and the second one is I take a look at a series that I had reviewed previously, um, but at that time uh, there was no dub attached to it, and then I just talk about the dub of that series after rewatching it, giving my opinions on the performances and all that stuff, and basically that's kind of the format we're working with for today's video. Um, <laughs> It saves me some time with re-reviewing the whole thing over again, and in case people want my opinion on dubs of shows that, uh, that have been reviewed previously, I figured this would be the perfect outlet to do so. So today, I am going to be talking to you guys about the dub of Attack on Titan. I think this is probably the most appropriate show to go with for this first um, series, uh, talking dubs thing. And I'm gonna start off with the scriptwriter and the ADR director and kind of work backwards in the cast. First things first, scriptwriter and ADR director. For scriptwriter, it is actually two people. Um, the first is J. Michael Tatum. He took on the majority of the writing for the series, but there is one other person. He wrote at least six episodes, and that's Tyson Reinhardt. I don't know a lot about him as of right now. I actually don't really know much about his writing credits. Give me a second, I'll give you a peek onto that. Okay, so we have script credits. He doesn't have a lot. He's done more voice work than um, script work. But he's done Aquarian Evil, Hitalia the Beautiful World, Carnival, that's an interesting one, and High School DxD New. And then Tatum, as we all know, in terms of script writing, he's also done some of the script for Aquarian Evil. Haha, <laughs> he's doing script for Free Eternal Summer. He's done script for Fractale. Steins Gate is probably a bigger one that he's done. The script, because I'll admit I don't know which episodes um, Reinhardt did um, to really sh see that difference between Tatum and Reinhardt. But I think the script was well done, I think it was adapted nicely, and I think the two did a wonderful job in adapting it. Granted there are some random lines and jokes that were really weird to me, and um, I'll get to that in a second because it's there's it's part of one of the performances that I am going to talk about. As for ADR director, that went to the magnificent Mike McFarland. You may you may or may not know that name somewhere. Um, McFarland, he's done directing work. Uh, he's done some episodes of One Piece, the dub for the Wolf Children film. You probably know him the best for anything and everything Full Metal Alchemist uh, from the. 2003 series to Brotherhood to all the films. He's the one who directed the dub for all of those, which is pretty freaking awesome if you ask me to stick around with a show for that long. His directing work, because the first directing thing that I've seen him do um, that I actually remember is Wolf Children last year. And I thought it was amazing. It was brilliant. After seeing Attack on Titan, I loved it as well. And He's definitely someone I enjoy seeing their work. Um, I enjoy the work he's done. I did see Secret Star of Milos uh, a couple of years ago, and in Boston for screening. Bef that was before I found out it was McFarland who was directing it, and that was still pretty well done, even though I was still slightly behind on Full Metal Alchemist, and that was the one full-fledged thing that I've seen of the franchise. But um, bottom line, I think this combination of uh, Tatum, Reinhardt, and McFarland. They work really well, and McFarland especially, I put my faith in him with his dub, uh, and you'll see why in a minute, and I think all of that work really paid off 
with some of these performances. The first performance and the first role I want to talk about, um, we're going to start with um, some members of the uh, Survey Corps, uh, the Scouts. And the first person I'm going to talk about is, considering we are on the topic of J. Michael Tatum, let's talk about Erwin Smith because that is the character that he voices in the dub. Um, Erwin is definitely um, interesting. He take, Tatum takes on the leader role rather well, and honestly I didn't have a lot of notes to write down in my outline about it. Um, if you are living under a rock and don't know who Tatum is, uh, performance-wise, he's Lawrence from Spice and Wolf, he's Ray in Free Eternal Summer that was recently announced a few months ago, um, he's also uh, Okabe from Steins Gate, which I still need to see. Um, so he's done a lot of things and he's definitely knows what he's doing. This performance specifically with Erwin Ir Smith, um, I don't know how to feel about it because really there's something there but like when you mostly get one facial expression from your character for the majority of the series it's difficult to try and engage the kind of performance without saying it's like flat <laughs> I want to say it's kind of stoic um, maybe but um, yeah it's difficult to kind of gauge whether or not this was a really good performance or not um, in terms of Tatum and his work I would say it's kind of above average not phenomenal but definitely not mediocre or terrible uh, I would say above average maybe um, but I really hope that he has a chance to kind of expand on that character a bit more um, considering there the second season is happening in 2016 and hopefully from what I've gathered Evan has a little bit more of a role um, the next few chapters according to the manga anyway so I would love to see that explored and expanded upon even more personally but I think Tatum did well not out of, not knocking it out of the park but he did really well with the role the next character I'm gonna talk about doesn't exactly have a major part to play in this series at least from what I've seen however I still wanted to talk about her um, because I think the character itself is rather fun, and that is Hanje. Um, Hanje in the dub is played by Jessica Calvello. Um, you may recognize her as um, the first Excel from Excel Saga. She is the one who lost her voice midway th through the dubbing process. Uh, so there's that. Um, in, and recently she's done um, Gatchaman Crowds and Queen's Blade. So she's been doing quite a few things recently, more with Sentai from what I've gathered, but. Um, She's still around. For Hanje, though, there was a hint of Excel in there, obviously, because uh, Hanje is just really, really nutty. She's a bit of a fruitcake, and it's weird and fun, and Calvello definitely had a lot of fun with the role. I can tell that much, and it's one of those performances I can't really expand upon, expand upon too much, because, um, I only know her for so few roles, and with Excel being one of the bigger, the big one really, and it's hard for me to judge her if I haven't seen any variety um, outside of pretty much similar character types and personalities between Excel and Hanjai. That doesn't mean I didn't like it. I loved it. It was crazy and fun, but it, it's hard for me to really give a good critique on it if I haven't seen a lot of her work. Um, and the same can be said for at least a decent amount of these characters I'm going to be talking about today. But yeah, I felt it was a good performance. I loved it. Hanje is made me giggle a lot during some of her um, bits. Just her obsession and dialogue and banter with some of the other characters. It was just wonderful and I loved it so much. The last character from the Survey Corps um, that I really wanted to talk about uh, is one of two of the, I guess you could say controversial um, characters and roles that were dubbed because um, at the time that it was announced, uh, a lot of people got a little bit salty. Um, and one of those, obviously, was uh, Matthew Mercer as Captain Levi. And uh, honestly, I thought it was great. I love the performance. I mean, I can understand why people were, some people were freaking out, um, because <laughs> a lot of people 
a lot of people love Captain Levi. Like, a lot of people, like, there's a fan base for Captain Levi and it's crazy. You can tell that because of that love and devotion, there's gonna be fans who are like, no, you're gonna do it wrong, I don't want this, da 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 Like, purist kind of deal. Um, but I'm just looking at the dub itself as its own thing. How I see it is that when you have some an original work and then you have someone adapting it, you're not gonna get the same performances or the same exact adaptation 100% of the time. And that could, that's very true for like if you're adapting books into films, if you have a theater production that does one show here and then a completely different production somewhere else. That's kind of how I feel about it. Um, for Matthew Mercer though, which by the way, because I did not mention who else he's played, he has done Fate Zero, Gargantia on Virgin's Planet, and I had one five seconds ago, Persona 4. Those are three that at least I'm aware of that he's done. Um, and uh, personally, I think Levi, compared to all the other shows that I've seen him in, uh, Levi is my favorite of his performances thus far. Um, there's still a handful that I need to see. There's still a lot of performances that I can really dig into and watch and then make a proper comparison. But I think that Captain Levi, with him, it was one of my favorite performances, I've got to be honest. It's weird how, it's weird how that sounds. But he was one of my favorites in the dub, and I just enjoyed him immensely. I think he handled the role well, and it actually turned into one of my favorite performances of the dub, ironically enough. Uh, so yeah, I definitely enjoyed Mercer as Levi, and I can't wait to hear more of it. The next several characters I'm going to talk about, uh, most of them are going to be in pairs. Because a lot of times when in, throughout the series you see these a good amount of these characters in pairs, um, so I'm going to put them together in pairs because why not? So the first um, pair I'm going to talk about is um, the performances for Ymir and Krista. And for Ymir we have Elizabeth Maxwell, and for Krista we have Bryn April. Now starting with Ymir, ironically enough, Maxwell doesn't have a lot of credits under her belt looking at ANN. The only other major role that she has is Makoto Kusanagi in the new Ghost in the Shell Arise OVA series. Um, otherwise than that, she has smaller roles in Fairy Tale, One Piece, and the second season of Space Dandy. Um, and that's her ex the extent of her voice acting career. So it's interesting to see that. Um, how I felt with Ymir, it's hard to say. Because with Ymir, she doesn't exactly do a whole lot. Um, apparently she's more involved later on. But for now, from what I've seen, there's nothing that really stood out to me. Um, Maxwell, she did good with the role, but at the same time, it's not something that was memorable for me. That doesn't mean it was, again, doesn't mean it was terrible. It was just one of the more forgettable performances, unfortunately, in my mind. What it might come down to is the fact that Ymir doesn't appear that much uh, in this these 26 episodes, anyway. 25, 26 episodes. Um, as for Krista and uh, Bryn April, she also is fairly new uh, to the voice acting game. Uh, you may or may not know her from a Certain Magical Index, the second season of that, the film Hal, and. Um, at least for me, the most notable one that I see that I still need to watch is uh, Red Data Girl and her role is Izumiko and that's where I actually first heard about her um, last year in Anime Boston. So she's fairly new to me. This is the first time I've actually seen her complete a whole role. As Krista, she is cute as a button. It is an adorable role because Krista is a sweetheart. She's such a sweetheart, everybody likes her, all the boys want her, uh, and it kind of becomes a little bit of a running joke a couple times um, between the boys. And I think April uh, pulled it off really well. She's, she's cute and adorable. She has that voice that just screams cute and sweet and kind. Um, at, again, at the same time, because I cheat sometimes, there is a little bit more to Krista's story, and if that does get adapted in the com in the next season, it'll be interesting to see that shift um, in April in her 
voice acting. Brandon Apple definitely did well with Krista, um, and I really need to watch Red, Dead, Red Data Girl now because I own it and I haven't touched it yet because um, I'm interested to know what other work she's done. So at least got me interested in what else you do. So kudos to you. The next two I want to talk about um, are Raina and Bertolt. Now because these two, you often see them together again, um, just like you see Ymir and Krista together almost al almost always. Raina is played by Robert McCullen. And Bertolt is played by David, I'm going to ruin names, I swear to god, David Matronga, Matron, Matron, David Matronga, maybe, that's how you pronounce it, I apologize. Um, for these two, I'm going to start with Bertolt. Um, with, I'm going to call him David, because names, blah. With David's performance of Bertolt, just like Ymir, there's not a whole lot there, he doesn't exactly the character itself doesn't exactly impact the series that much. Um, so it makes it, again, a little bit hard to talk about the performances. But for David's performance of uh, Bertolt, I think when you sit him and Rhino down, you can definitely see the distinction because the distinction between the two, because apparently these two know each other prior to their days as cadets. It worked really nicely to me, in my opinion, um, with David as Bertolt. But again, the problem is really that since the character doesn't do a lot, it's hard to really judge it um, and f see the path that the character goes. Um, if you are interested in other roles that David Matrogna has done, <laughs> I so I'm sorry. Um, off the top of my head, he's also in Red Data Girl. He is in. Uh, Le Chevalier d'Eon is a good one um, that I enjoyed, and there was another one I saw recently. Codebreaker, that's the other one I saw recently. With his performances, Bertolt, um, it was good. I thought it was pretty decent. Um, then there's Robert McCullen as Raina. Um, McCullen, before you, before I forget to tell you, again, um, some roles that he's done, uh, you can see him in Psychopaths, you can see him in, oh lordy, 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 I'm forgetting already. Let's see is another one. Uh, Fairy Tale is one. It's actually also going to be free in Eternal Summer as well. Uh, da -da 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 -da. But yeah, you kind of get the idea. With Rhina, he actually has a little bit more involved. And I think McCollum takes that role, because Rhina's a little bit, between him and Bertolt, she's a little bit more manly. Uh, and McCollum takes that role and he does really well with it. Though he is the bane of some ass jokes every now and again. Um, like I said, there, like I mentioned with um, the script writing, there were some moments where the script was a little weird to me. And um, there was this one scene uh, during the Trost arc where um, before they try and start this counterattack against some uh, Five meter titans, I think it is. Uh, they're going down the stairs, and Reiner is talking about, um, you know, there's another way to kill titans. You just shove this thing up their ass, and it, I'm just like, what in the world is this? And then um, Jean, um, another character, and I'm gonna get to him in a few minutes. He comes in, he's like, it's like, really, will you stop? Do you really want your last words to possible to be an ass joke? I'm like, oh god. Granted, it was one of my favorite moments of the show. And that was one of my favorite lines that Jean said. And, but still, for some reason, it kind of was like, Ryan is the bane of ass jokes. Because I believe there was another point in the in the in the show where there was another ass joke, and he was involved again. So it was funny and weird to see that come out. Um, but definitely, I liked McCollum's role as Raina. I liked his performance of it. The next two I would like to talk about um, are Connie and Sasha. Uh, Sasha is played in the dub by Ashley Birch and Connie is played in the dub by Clifford Chapman. Now I'm going to start with Sasha because she, like Elizabeth Maxwell and Ymir, Birch actually has very little voice acting credits. It's really amusing. There's only three other credits to her name and that's Dragon Ball Z Kai, Fairy Tale and the second season of Space Dandy. So she's still relatively new to this, but it's really wonderful to see her take on the role of Sasha. Cause Sasha Sasha has a lot of energy. Um, like not so much energy as Hanjay. Cause um, the two of them are really the two of them are pretty similar. 
Though Hanjay has like so much expendable energy um, to burn, she just burns it all. But then like Sasha, she has that energy, but she also is still uh, kind of um, closed off sometimes. She holds back a little bit. Um, and to see Birch play both of sides um, is rather, rather wonderful, and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, as her performance of Potato Girl. Potato Girl, oh lord. As for Clifford Chapin and his role as Connie, um, Chapin is actually still fairly new as well. However, he is slowly gaining some popularity with his roles. Um, a few others you may know him from. The recently announced Harutora from Tokyo Ravens, Kamui from um, Psycho Pass 2. He's also going to be in Free Eternal Summer as well. Uh, and he's also done other roles like Fairy Tale, Bento, uh, Laughing Under the Clouds, another broadcast dub. He's done a few things. He's growing in popularity. Um, and honestly, I thought that his performance as Connie was a lot of fun. It was definitely the first time I ever heard um, Chapin and in any of the roles, or in anything really, because um, I've heard last year when I was at Emmy Boston, I heard his name tossed around quite a bit. I wasn't aware of that fact, and I had no idea who he was. And um, when the announcement for Connie came up, I believe that was the same and uh, same day that other roles like Jean and um, Sasha and a couple others were announced. I think that was that day um, when he was announced. And I thought it was a fun performance. It was definitely a very good look into um, Chapin and what he's capable of. I am very interested in seeing Tokyo Ravens now because uh, I did not watch it while I was simulcasting and apparently a good amount of people loved it and he's taking on the lean ro leading role for that one. So it, it'll definitely be an interesting we watched and just interesting to see where Chapin goes from here and what direction his voice acting career takes him. These last five characters I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to do it individually because I feel with the, ma the main three obviously reasons. But with these next two, um, I feel like they need to be talked about individually for a few good reasons because they each impact, because the two of them impact the series a lot. Um, the first is Annie, and that who's voiced by Lauren Londa. For Lauren, she's <laughs> there's a lot of fairly new voice actors hiding out in here, but for Lauren Londa, um, you may have seen her also do. A certain magical index two, familiar zero, um, some ikitosin in there, and she's actually Kyoko from Madoka Magica, which is pretty cool. Um, for her as Annie, again, it was one I never heard of before, and I thought it was rather good, to be completely honest. She was one of those characters that played the kind of like this fine line. Um, between the good and the bad on some occasions. It was definitely fun and interesting to see her go and play those two sides. It's saddening that we probably won't hear from her in this role for a while, cause spoilers. Landa as Annie was definitely a lot of fun to listen to and I enjoyed it immensely. The other character outside of the main three that I'm gonna talk about individually is Jean Kirstein. He's actually my second favorite character in the overall series um, outside of Armin and he is played in this dub by Mike McFarlane. Hello again Mr. McFarlane. It's it's great to see you again coming into this. Um, McFarlane, he, if you have not seen any of his voice work, voice acting credits before, um, like a few a few you may know um, include, I know He's done One Piece, and he's Buggy the Clown. Goemon for a good amount of like Lupin the Third films, and including uh, the woman called Fujiko Mine. Um, there's also oh, he's um, Natsuno Yuki's father from Shigi. That's one I can see off the top of my head. Um, and Kane Night Road, he's also in the dub for Trinity Blood. Um, again, it's my second favorite character, but with McFarlane's performance of Jean, I'll admit it took a little bit of adjusting um, compared to. Uh, what I remember of the Japanese and what I thought of Japanese but I think it was still a really well done performance it's also one of my favorite performances of the oh, hello there um, and Mick Farland because Jean's character specifically 
I consider, I mean, there's the three main characters of um, Eren, Mikasa, and Armin. I kind of consider Jean to be like that fourth main character in my mind because you do see Jean a lot throughout this series. And um, with Jean, he's going through pretty much the trials that any soldier would go through. Like, he's, he really only wanted to be a soldier so he can join the military police and live the e easy life, but then because of Aaron's influence on him, he begins to change slowly over time. I mean, not only Aaron's influence, but the death of one of his comrades, actually. That was actually the kind of, I guess you could say, the breaking point for Jean. And to see McFarland go through that transition uh, with, this, with this character, it was really wonderful to see that, and I thought it translated really well um, for the English dub. So, which is probably why it's one of my favorite performances. And it kind of helps reaffirm that John is one of my favorite characters and then it helps me reaffirm that I do consider him a main character instead of one of the um, m minor ones, really. And now we go to our main three. And first, of course, I'm going to start with Armin. Um, Armin is voiced in the dub by Josh Greeley. Josh Greeley, um, you may, you've probably seen him. Uh, Future Diary, though I don't recommend Future Diary, this, the series itself is just bad. Um, let's see, what else? Princess Jellyfish, that one I highly recommend. Um, he is also done Devil is a Part-Timer, and he's actually going to be playing Nitori for Free Eternal Summer. So, he's done quite a bit of voice work, um, as well. And his performance as Armin, again, like I mentioned a minute ago, he's my, Armin's my favorite character. And the way Greeley portrays him makes it my favorite performance at the dub. Mostly, probably, maybe it doesn't help that I'm biased now of Armin to pieces. But I still think it was a really, really good performance on Greeley's half, on Greeley's part. Um, though there were a few things that kind of seemed a little weird, like, McFarland and John. I mean, I'll admit it took a minute to adjust to that compared to the Japanese. With Greeley, I can imagine him losing his voice every now and again with the amount of times that Armin screams and it's this high pitched, like, oh my god, your throat must be killing you by screaming that much. Oh my god. I. Yeah, kudos to you on that one, sir. It, um, it was. <laughs> it was pretty freaking cool that you managed that and I hope that your voice recovered properly because I can imagine that you just killed your vocals after that one. But once I got that adjustment um, and got used to Armin and his character, I mean, it didn't take very long, all things considered. I mean, the first few episodes were when the three main characters were children, um, so it didn't take that long um, to adjust to really as Armin and again it was one of my favorite performances of the dub. I thought it was the best possible choice. I'll admit at the time um, when casting was going around and everything um, and people were guessing like who was gonna play who, I'll admit that I had I threw my two cents in and I would have loved to see Greeley as Aaron. I thought that would have been pretty interesting to see that happen but um, obviously it didn't happen and I think it's for the best because he definitely fits the role of Armin much better than he could with Eren. Next is Mikasa, of course, um, the leading female, the leading badass of the uh, series of the show. And this one, um, she is voiced by Trina Nishimura, um, who I am not that familiar with to be completely honest. Uh, I don't know much about her, but she is has done roles with um, Baka and Test, she's in the Evangelion films, she has done Heaven's Lost Property, Rideback is one, she's done quite a few things, um, but for some reason, I don't know how I am not familiar with this person. For her role of um, Mikasa, I honest, because I didn't know that much about her at the time that it was announced, I honestly didn't know if it was going to work or not. And I think some people didn't think it was going to, again, because this is a high-profile series like this. You have some people freaking out over like, oh my god, this is not working. And believe me, we're gonna get to the biggest one of all in a minute. For Nishimura as Mikasa, it worked. I really enjoyed it a lot. She definitely brought that series tone in um, for the character, and she got to play with it a little bit, I noticed. So, 
And because Mikasa is not without her flaws or her weaknesses, and um, it was nice to see Nishimona go there with those vulnerabilities, and also as well as her weird obsession. I don't want to call it obsession. I guess we'll call it a crush on Aaron. Mer, whatever. It's it wasn't one of my favorites uh, performances, but it definitely, again, like I guess going back to like Tatum and Irvin. Mikasa, uh, Nishiboda's Mikasa is probably above average, um, in my opinion, but it's not outstanding, um, it's not there yet, uh, there's definitely room to grow with it, and hopefully with the second season coming out next couple of years, we'll see that happen, so it was definitely at least a good, I guess you can say, teaser into probably what Nishimura can probably do with the role of given more. Okay, so here we go. The big one, the main character, we are talking Aaron Yeager, um, which is very, very interesting one to talk about, to be completely honest, because um, I did not think this was bound to happen when um, the announcement came, because I was there for the uh, dub premiere Anime Boston last year when, here, when it was announced, um, who was playing Aaron, and I didn't think it was, that was weird for to hear it um, happen, but um, I was moderately okay with it, and then when I watched the whole thing through, I kind of fell in love with Bryce Pabham Brooks' performance as Aaron. Um, Pabham Brook is actually becoming really popular as of recently. Um, I mean, not just with Aaron, but he's also done Kirito for Sora Online. I hate that series, don't mind me. Um, he's also done um, Durarara, uh, Vampire Knight. Uh, more recently, he's done Blood Lad. He's voicing the main character of that. But also, if you're looking for something really, really old that he's done, uh, go look up Trigun, because uh, he plays Little Vash um, in the series. And I did not know this until like, a couple of years ago when I looked it up. Um, was doing a review, I think probably for Durarara or Vampire Knight, one of those two. And I saw that and it was like, this is weird. Anyways, um, <laughs> it definitely <laughs> was interesting to see because just like with Mercer and Levi, Pappenbroke and Aaron were one of the, was basically the other big one that people were kind of like, what? Freaking out over. Um, some people I know embraced it like wholeheartedly because they saw Sword Art Online and then they loved it and they loved him as Kirito. But then you have the people who hated Sword Art Online and are kind of hesitant about um, Aaron, like I was, because I did not like Sword Art Online and honestly, I did not like his performance as Kirito. I'm being completely honest here. But with Aaron, this is one of those special circumstances where. Um, Maybe you might remember in my Free Eternal Summer video where I mentioned talking about the director and seeing if they can make it work for them. This is the case here with Mike McFarlane. I think Mike McFarlane directing it was basically the big reason as to why this was so successful. Um, it took, again, this is one of the ones where it took a minute to kind of adjust to. I mean, because the first few episodes, they're kids, again. It was weird, I mean, Pappenberg voicing a child is weird, but um, compared to how Greeley and Nishimura did it, but um, giving him going to like more teenage um, Aaron, there were points where it worked, there were points where it didn't, but at the same time it wasn't terrible because Aaron goes through a crap ton in this show. Like I don't know if you know, like if you're the two people who again have not seen it, but he goes through a lot crap in this show. It's ridiculous and it was at least nice to see that being reflected in his voice work. He kept uh, fluctuating a lot and it. I think personally Aaron is one of the better perf better performances in Pappenbrook's career to be completely honest. Granted I still need to see Blood Lad and I think that will probably like kick all the other roles that I love to the curb. As of right now, Aaron was definitely one of the roles that of Pappenbrook's that I enjoyed more than a good amount of his work. Um, which is saying a lot, because I've seen a decent amount of his work, and especially his the ones where he's major characters in it. And with him being 
tapped to play a lot of leading characters nowadays, he's become one of those actors where it's hit or miss um, for me. And for this one, it was definitely a hit. It worked. It ended up working really well. Um, and again, looking at um, how McFarlane pushed him um, to get that, to get to that point, to get to that kind of performance and that vocal quality that he's looking for, to hear those sounds coming from him, you can tell, you can definitely tell he was pushed to go that far. And I have to give credit to him and to McFarlane for pushing him that far. It was wonderful to see that happen. And again, it's not my favorite performance of the dub, but it's definitely one of my favorite Pap and Brook performances overall. I think he's on the right track. If you give Pap and Brook a good director, I think that's the key here. If you give him a good director like you gave him with Big Farland, you're gonna get a really good performance out of him. And after I saw like the first episode at um, Anime Boston last year, I couldn't stick around for the other three or four because I had to go to an autograph signing. Me and uh, my friend Almon, we, we sat through the first episode together and then we went to the autograph signing. The two of us were like, I might still have that video hiding somewhere because I never made that vlog. Um, we were like, I think it's good. I think, we're gonna... I think, I think the internet is going to be worrying about nothing. Probably. These are, they're professionals, people. Calm down. They're not going to fuck this up, guys. <laughs> they're not. Especially with a title this big. They're not going to screw it up. They're not. They're not. Calm down. It's okay. Calm down. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Like, we were sure that it was going to work, and I think for those who haven't seen the dub and who are worried about it, I would say watch the first five episodes. I'm not saying three because the first few episodes, they are kids. For, watch the first four or five episodes to get a taste of it, um, to see, and overall, see how the dub goes. But honestly, I think Pavin Brick's performance, it's the best I've seen from him thus far. Um, and it's not the best from the show. I will say that in my opinion, it's not the best from the show, but it's the best from Pappenbrook himself. Um, overall, uh, definitely, I definitely think that the dub was really, really solid. It helped that McFarland, who has done really, really high profile work before, like Film Alchemist, it definitely helped having him as director. It was wonderful to see a good amount of cast members that were still fairly new to the voice acting game, like um, Chapin Maxwell, Birch, um, April is one. You can definitely see the work that paid off. I think the dub overall was really, really strong. Um, it worked, the, the cast worked well with each other. They worked well with what they had. Um, I mean, I had my favorite performances in Greeley, uh, McFarland, and even Mercer, but there were still a good amount of strong ones. Definitely a solid dub um, for those who are hesitant about the dub. Again, like I said, I would say probably give it five episodes because that'll give you um, a general look. It's definitely when it gets to when they start um, their training as cadets that I think you'll notice um, the strong points of the series a lot more. Because uh, it's hard, again, it's hard to tell when you have your three main characters as little kids for the first few episodes. And it's hard to judge it that way, but when you actually get to who they are for the majority of the series, it works a lot better. Um, so overall, I would say watch the first five episodes. It's a solid dub, at least to me. Um, there are wonderful performances. There, there are wonderful performances. There are above average performances. And there are performances where there's not enough for the characters to do, so I can't really judge them that much, but I try to as best as I can. Um, next time, I'm not sure uh, what the plan is for the next dubs video, whether or not what show I'm going to do, or um, which, which show I'm going to tackle next, or uh, when that's going to happen. If you have a suggestion for a series that I may have already reviewed but had not talked the, in terms of the dub, please let me know in the comments below. I will gladly look at it again. So hopefully we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, until next time, I'm Taco on my friends. Oh hey, there's, a, there's one more thing I forgot to mention before. Uh, cause I'm an idiot and I forget things. As you all know, my review is on its way and all that stuff. And, um, 
I'm hoping y you guys can help me again one more time because uh, you already helped me pick out 9599. What I would like to do is ki kind of this little opening thing with my Hunter for review, but I want to involve you guys in it. So basically, the idea is you film yourself telling me series that you think the 100 review should be, and I'll just put them together in some random thing, and it'll be fantastic. Um, you can submit max of three, max of three, um, and you can put them in video format and send them to the email address on your screen right here. Uh, and let's see, what when should we have them in by is the question. Let's say to have them in by Friday, March 20th. We'll say have them in to me by the end of Friday, March 20th. And you can email them to me or if uh, you follow me on Twitter and you want to use a different method to send them to me, uh, check out my Twitter and um, send me a message through there and we can arrange something that way. Because I want to do this and involve you guys because I wouldn't have gotten this far without you. And I wanted to involve you as much as humanly possible in this little bit. Um, uh, like five years and 100 reviews, it's like, oh my god. <laughs> but um, anyway, and you can make them as funny or weird as you want. I want this to be something really memorable and I want you guys to be a part of it. Now I'm pretty sure that's everything. Um, they're due March 20th. Uh, I guess, yeah, that's everything. <laughs> Until next time, Otaku on my friend.